it doesn't get any smoother than that song there. That was the Isley Brothers with Between the Sheets. You're listening to the Vibe Soft Hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. I'm Course Nylander. I'll be taking you up to 3 o'clock on KKSM 1320. And I'm so lucky right now to be joined over the phone by one of the members of that group we just heard, the Isley Brothers, uh, one of the past members. How are you doing this morning, Chris Jasper? Hey, I'm doing fine. Doing great, man. Thank you so much for calling in. It really is such an honor. I mean, that song, it doesn't get any smoother than music like that. <laughs> yeah, I was just, when I was playing, I was brought back some memories of recording, you know, in, in the studio. Uh, that was a fun session. And where are you calling us from today? Uh, New York. New York? What's the weather like over there? It's a little rainy oh, over here in San Diego. Today. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, uh, of course, since the Isley Brothers, you've gone solo, and you just released a new solo single, The One. What's the story behind that song, which we're going to play after the interview? Yeah, um, the one is a, is a ballad from the album. I, I just finished the album, by the way, and uh, the album is going to be coming out in September. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a love song. Um, I've gotten so much, you know, a good feedback from it. You know, people love the song, and uh, that's, that's very encouraging. I love to hear the feedback even from people on Facebook, you know. They tell me how much they love it, so I'm very pleased with how it turned out. And, of course, you sent it to me, and I've listened to it several times, and it's really in my top favorites on my uh, iTunes library. Can't stop listening to it. It's so good. Thank you. It's Thank you. definitely got that smooth Isley Brothers sound. Yeah, and that's you know that's the thing people tell me, and um, even on the song like Between the Sheets uh, that just went off, everything you hear is Chris Jasper musically. <laughs> you know, uh, the uh, I think Ernie had a, a small little guitar part on there. So like, you know, when 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 you hear that music, a lot of it is me playing. So. You know, my new stuff, you know, has that same sound because I'm I'm playing all the instruments on it. And I think it's a very comfortable sound to, you know, several people that might have grown up with the Isley Brothers music. Yes. I think it's very comforting today to hear that music still being made. Yes, that's all they tell me. They, you know, uh, bring bring us back that good music, you know. And uh, I have a song on this uh, new album that's, you know, talking about that, bringing back, you know, some of the good melodies and, and, and good feelings in the music, you know. And, and how long did it take to record this album and the single? Um, this album took uh, about eight, nine months to, to complete. And um, your music is usually very, very romantic. Does love play a big role when you're writing? Oh, yeah. You know, when I'm writing a song, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of um, easy to kind of sit back and think about my wife. And, you know, that, that helps the lyrics flow a little bit better, you know. So you get it but, from uh, a very personal place yeah yeah they're, they're they're very personal and they're, they're very honest you know and and i think i think artistry is best when uh, the 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 author or the composer is is honest and I, I think you get the best results most definitely and it that that um this album's released on your own label gold city records which is based over where you are right now in new york when did you start that record label uh i started it in um right after uh, IJI, uh, Izzy Jasper Isley, uh, Caravan of Love, right after that. Um, I think it was 1987 uh, when I started Gold City Records. And, uh, you know, I've been doing my solo projects on there, you know, ever since then. I've also had some other artists on there. And r right now, my son Michael's on, on Gold City. So, um, you know, I've, I've worked with that for a long time. Yeah, I was just going to ask that. Your own son, Mike Jasper, is part of that label. What, what type of music is he doing right now? He's doing, you know, like uh, club music, I guess. It's, it's it has some pop elements and some R&B elements in it, but it's, you know, heavy, you know, rhythmic and, you know, dance in, in nature. And to give him a quick plug, where can people go if they want to hear what he's doing? Oh, um, you can go to his website, um, uh, Mike Metronomic uh, Jasper. Uh, and um, also you can go to, you know, Gold City uh, Music website, too, and his material's on there, too. So people should definitely go check that out. He comes from a very talented family. And um, th this isn't your first solo album. I mean, you've had many, like, I believe, what, 10 solo releases already? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had uh, 10 solo albums. Oh, the first one was Super Bad. That started it uh, back when I you know, formed Gold City Records. And that was a, that was that kind of started my solo career. It was a number one single, and the album was very well received. And I've, I even did four gospel albums uh, during that uh, time period, too. So uh, I had you know been doing a lot of recording. And you mentioned the song "Super Bad," and that, there was a theme to that song, which was to emphasize the importance of education, which which has been a recurring theme, a theme to uh, many solo songs you've released. Is yeah, yeah, I, you know, around that time, 
Uh, I was what I was doing right after the uh, Caravan of Love album. I was touring some of the schools because uh, um, people at CBS asked me, you know, would I be, you know, willing to talk to, you know, some of the kids in the schools, you know, because there were problems with, you know, dropouts and, you know, um, different other kind of problems in schools, and 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 I did that. And when I went there, I I got to see firsthand, you know, how you know some of the kids weren't focusing, you know, on education and the importance of it. And so I said, you know, somebody needs to write, you know, something, you know, about this. And um, that's what gave me the uh, idea to write the song Superbad. And that's what I love about artists like you, who I call great artists. So many of these modern pop artists that just kind of release generic songs, they they don't write songs with a meaningful message like you do. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, uh, even with, with Isaac Jess Rise, I wrote, you know, uh, Brother to Brother, which was a song about apartheid, you know, at the time. And, you know... Um, I, I, I always feel that I have to say something, you know, if, if there's a condition in society, um, because I think it's a privilege to be a recording artist, number one. And what you say does matter. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, you know, people shouldn't look at it that way, you know, but really people do. Uh, recording artists can have a big influence on society. And my, my point of view is, well, if I'm going to have any influence at all, it's going to be positive. And I, that's what I love about your music. There's no negative feelings. It just makes you feel good, maybe have romantic feelings. Yes. And, you know. and to do with education, how do you feel about so many public schools cutting music programs across the oh. country? Oh, I think it's terrible. I think um, people need to reevaluate that because um, with music, you know, reading music and studying music, uh, that helps, you know, your ability to learn, and it's been proven that people who, you know, read music and uh, who study music do have a better aptitude for math and other things, you know, um, uh, memory, and, you know, a whole lot of things it does for you, even if you're not going into the musical field. But um, it does help, you know, music too, because, you know, people who have a musical background generally do write better. They write better songs, you know. Uh, the music is better, so... Um, I think I think it's just on a lot of levels just a bad idea to cut musical programs. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's a bad area to think that you can have cutbacks. Just yeah. focus on that spot. Let's let's go back in time a little bit so people can understand your background. First off, where were you born? Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And did you um, did you know from the start that music was your passion? I knew I really loved music. I knew that. Um, because, you know, when I would hear a song, sometimes I would visualize, you know, different things. You know, it would, it would, it would click, you know, a certain thing in my brain to start, you know, like when you start a, a, a film, you know, or a short film. I used to hear a song, and, the, and, and I used to visualize some of the lyrics sometimes. And I knew I loved music, and I started to try to play by ear at first. And when I did, my mother saw me, and she said, you know, Chris, you have talent. Why don't you learn how to read music, you know? And... Um, I was about seven years old at the time, and I said, I agreed. I said, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And she knew a professor from Cincinnati Conservatory that, you know, taught me a lot about, you know, reading music and analyzing music. And I think that's my, where my love for songwriting began. And what was your first instrument that you used to make music? Oh, piano. Uh, I, I learned how to uh, play the piano. As a matter of fact, I was kind of teaching myself at first. And then, you know, when I started taking lessons, you know, my ability got better and better. And who were your first influences as a, mu as a music artist? Any famous singers or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Well, of course, you know, Ray Charles, Sam Cooke, Jackie Wilson. They were kind of the first ones I was, you know, like, I wanted to be like Sam Cooke, you know, and Ray Charles. And then uh, Marvin Gaye came in there, and then uh, he, was, he was a favorite as well, you know, and, and a lot of the Motown artists, you know, and the Motown sound, period. Uh, that was a big influence on me. And you went on to go to Juilliard, I mean, one of the best music schools in the world. Yes. Yes, Juilliard was a great experience. Um, lots and lots of talented people there. Um, I studied, comp you know, I majored in composition, but in, uh, I ended up completing my musical ed education at uh, Long Island University, uh, where uh, Billy Taylor co taught a course and some other composers out there that it was the, the program was a little more free and you know allowed me to do a little bit of jazz and a little bit of everything you know uh so that's that's why that's what attracted me out there and you were actually uh first off classically trained right yes was it your intention at the time to 
take the classical route, or did you know you wanted to veer off into soul me- soul music? Well, like I said, my first love was soul music, but I did want to learn the nuts and bolts, you know, of music. You know how it's put together. You know, I was uh, always that kind of uh, kid. You know, I wanted to know how things worked, and um, that's why you know I was you know I was interested in studying music because I wanted to know how it was done. How does how do these guys compose the music? What you know where do they start? You know where does the whole <laughs> process start? And so um, that was kind of my uh, my draw to classical music because I could learn it. I, I could learn those things. And uh, later on, I, I wanted to learn about orchestration. You know, how do you write for an orchestra? How do you write for other instruments? You know, and um, I, I took up orchestration as part of the composition program. So I was, I was always interested in how things worked. You know, and, and, that's, and that's what the classical training did for me. Well, it definitely worked very well because, as we mentioned, you went on and became a part of the Isley Brothers. How did you become a part of that iconic group? Well, actually, we're all from Cincinnati, the same block, you know, we, we grew up on. Uh, and what happened was, uh, as time went on, my sister ended up marrying Rudolph Isley, one of the older brothers. Uh, and um, the three of us younger guys, me, Ernie, and Marvin, we were the same age. And, and they, the other old guys were a little older than us. So we started our own group, like when I was a young teenager, called the Jasmine Trio. And, um, you know, we played around the local areas in New Jersey and um, the older guys saw us and saw us progressing, and uh, they thought you know it would be a great idea if we you know uh, played with them you know uh, on the road and then you know on the sessions, and then we kind of just grew into one group you know as time went on. And you ended up writing many of their big hits, such as "Between the Sheets," which we yeah. uh, played, which I think is one of you know probably due to probably one of the causes of over- overpopulating the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell people, don't blame me for that. <laughs> so thank you, Chris. <laughs> so uh, what was the inspiration behind that song, if if I even need to ask? It's, it, it's kind of in pieces. The, the, the song came together in pieces. Ernie had part of the idea, and then I had you know part of the idea. And uh, But the, so- the, the song title uh, came from me because uh, Ernie didn't have an ending to his first phrase, you know. Uh, and I said, well, I wrote it down on a piece of a legal pad in the studio, and I gave it to him. I said, Ernie, say this at the end of that phrase. <laughs> and he said it, and I said, oh, yeah, okay, that works great. I said, now we have something, you know, to build on. And then we start building this song in stages. And then, you know, the last part of the song where he says enough of this singing, uh, that that was edited on. That wasn't even part of the original session. Uh, I, I kind of, you know, came up with that on the spur of the moment, you know. And tagged that on to the end, so it was a it was a, it was a collaborative effort, effort. But like I said, uh, when I was listening to it, I was remembering all those things <laughs> as the song went down. You know, <laughs> well, it's one of my favorite songs, so it really, is an honor to talk to one of the people that wrote it. Yeah. Do you remember the first song you ever wrote? Wow, that was a long time. That was even that was even before uh, we did the Jasmine Trio. I did some songs, uh, you know, just you. Know, uh, piano pieces, you know, basically. Uh, stuff that nobody will ever hear. <laughs> and quite <laughs> frankly, I think I forgot. <laughs> but, but um, you know, I dabbled a little bit with songwriting even before, you know, I got with the Isley Brothers. Uh, but I think the first thing that I wrote for the group was a song called Love Put Me on the Corner. Um, that was on the Brother, Brother, Brother album. Uh, right before 3 Plus 3. And uh, that was the first one I did, and I had a, a little classical introduction, you know, to the to the song, and I and I I did that in some later songs too, and um, and by the way, I have one in this this late this latest album, uh, which uh, really you know, it, it it's really a surprise. It's kind of a surprise. You don't expect to hear it, but it really fits well. And many big time artists such as Elio, Whitney Houston, Jay Z, Will Smith, Queen Latifah, and so many more have covered. Isley Brothers songs that you wrote. How does it make you feel that so many legends have done covers of your compositions? Oh, it feels great that that you know they choose to uh, pick one of the songs that I did out of the thousands and thousands and thousands of songs <laughs> that have been written. You know, and and such you know artists with you know good you know uh, popularity. You know, uh, that that's always great to see that somebody else uh, recognizes what you do, and uh, it's a great feeling. I mean, it kind of lets you know you're doing the right thing when the other people in the big leagues obviously have yeah. enough respect for your music. 
and and that's and that's all you know um well, I was trying to do, you know, along with Ernie. Ernie had a lot of ideas too. You know, me and him, uh, we we worked the closest together, and uh, that's what we were trying to do: is just do something that, um, you know, would 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 be competitive. You know, and that that it, there was a good idea that you know maybe a person would feel good about it after they heard it. You know, so uh, yeah, that's that's, and then it's great to see that you know, hey, it actually we actually accomplished the, the goal <laughs> because somebody else thought it was good too. You know. <laughs> And do you personally have a favorite Isley Brothers song? Um, if I would have to pick one song, that would be difficult. But I could tell you an album. My favorite album, I think, would be The Heat Is On. Uh, Great one. Because it had the, you know, the fast side and the slow side. It had Fight the Power on it. It had For the Love of You on it, which were huge, huge songs for the, for the group. And uh, it was also a number one album on, on the pop chart. So uh, that's a kind of standout. Uh, regardless of you know the other tunes, uh, there was some other great songs too, but that one kind of stands out. Yeah, I definitely agree. That was a wonderful album. And you've been in the music industry for so many decades. How do you feel soul music and R and B have changed as a genre since you started? Um, well, I, I can see a change in the production aspect of it. Uh, number one, um, a lot of a lot of the songs, you know do kind of sound the same, you know, in their production and production approach. Um, and there's, there's reasons for that. But um, I can see, you know, that some people are, you know, getting back to it. Or, you know, I, I can see some artists, you know, are turning back and, and saying, hey, you know, this is a, this is a great art form. We're going we're gonna to continue to do it. You know, I'm one of them, and there's other people, too that are, are recording uh, more and more, you know, what we call classic R&B. And I'm glad to see that. And you and the uh, members of the Isley Brothers were also inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is a huge honor. Tell us about that. Oh, yeah, the, the Hall of Fame, that was, yeah, that, that kind of came all of a sudden. I wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't expecting that. Uh, but it was a great thing. Uh, it was a great uh, ceremony they had, you know, down in, uh, actually that was in New York uh, at the Waldorf. And um, just you know, a class a class affair, you know, uh, uh, kind of a there was a dinner, and then there was a present award presentation right after, lots of press, you know, ver a very very uh, nice n nicely done thing. And you also personally just recently received another huge honor, a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. How did they choose a recipient of that award? That's amazing. Yeah, that. Uh, I think one of the criteria is that uh, your music, uh, the impact your music has, you know, on society. That's that's one of the criteria, and um, it's just you know kind of overwhelming at at the point when I was notified because, you know, I I, I wasn't thinking in terms of that, you know, just just trying to make good music, and when you realize that people, you know, it has impacted people's lives in a, in, in a, a, a huge way, and um, the the realization of that is something you know just got, have to take time and get used to, you know. And what was it that made you um, decide to go solo? Um, actually, when um, when Ernie resigned from Isley Jazz for Isley, I didn't have any other choice. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we couldn't do IJI anymore, so uh, you know, CBS asked me would I be interested in doing a solo project. And I said, sure, you know, I guess that's all I can do now. So um, that's what I did, and I just continued with it. Well, it turned out great. I mean, 10 albums later, here we are with the new one, The One. What would you like our listeners out there to know about that new project? Um, it's got, if you like the Isley Brothers, you're going to love this album because there's a lot of things that, you know, might remind you of those uh, songs, you know, the, the feel in them, the the chord structures, the melodies, uh, and also there's some solos in there too. So I believe in this album, all of the Isaac Brothers ingredients are in it. I definitely heard that when I listened to the song, The One. It's It's got that same kind of beneath the sheets, kind of sexy, smooth, yeah, love theme said, behind it. I said, I'm going to do everything Chris Jasper has done before, but only a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what this album is about. Well, there's nothing better than doing what you do best. Yeah. And you that's definitely you do that very wonderfully making wonderful music. And do you have uh, any upcoming live performances where people can hear this the new songs off the new album? 
Um, yeah, I don't have any of it scheduled yet, but um, I was waiting to finish this album and, and, and get it released, and then I guess I'll start uh, to plan some personal appearances after that. So um, it's, it, it, it'll be shortly, and I'll have everything up on my um, on my website too, my calendar, chrisjasper.com. That's where you can find everything. So, um, yeah, it's in the works. Definitely. And just, uh, I know you mentioned it earlier, but just to uh, keep it fresh in our listeners' mind, when are you expecting to release this uh, new album? Uh, September. Uh, uh, first couple of weeks in September, uh, it, it should be coming out. You should be hearing things from it. And uh, I think officially to radio, it'll be like going out on the 19th. So, uh, but you know, there's always previews, you know, and, yeah. and things that, that happen, uh, maybe some articles before that time. So uh, it'll be September. Awesome. And if our listeners want to go and purchase that album once it's released, or any of your past solo albums, where can they go? Oh, they can go to Amazon, uh, iTunes, uh, CD Baby. You know, you can find, and, and all those things you can find from ChrisJasper.com. That's that's a great thing. If you go to ChrisJasper.com, you can get to all the stores, all my calendars, all the events that are happening, all the discography, everything. And where could they follow you on social media? Yeah, they, uh, follow me uh, on Facebook, uh, and you can get to that through chrisjasper.com as well. That'll take you right to Facebook, the Facebook page, and, you know, you can see it. We're always posting things, new things up there, so you can always see my new interviews or whatever I'm doing right there on the Facebook page. Awesome. Thank you so much for calling us today, Chris. Bef- before you go, is there anything else you'd like our listeners to know? Yes, that I appreciate very much their support through all of the years, you know, and um, I can't thank them enough, and... Uh, People like you, Chorus, who play play the music and, you know, interview, you know, the media is like, you know, right there, you know, and I appreciate all the things that people have done for me. Thank you so much, Chris. I think I could speak on behalf of any of your fans that we appreci- appreciate you for keeping amazing music, playing on radio, and just keep doing what you're doing because you do such a great job. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now we're going to, I hope you enjoyed the interview there with Chris. We're going to play his new single, The One. Make sure to get the album when it comes out in September. You're listening to The Vibes, soft hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. Here's Chris Jasper.